So hello and welcome to another episode of the Radical Parenting Podcast. I'm here with a new guest, a special guest, Tom Dyson, someone I also met through the Radical Honesty community. And I think you guys are going to love his story. I think you're going to love his, his parenting style. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to talk to him. So Tom, it's been a long time, but thanks for joining me. Hey, Tony, you're welcome. It's good to see you. Yeah. Uh, so Tom and I have been uh, friends. I, I feel really close to Tom, but we really haven't spoken in a couple of years. And, and in this podcast, you guys are going to hear a little bit about, about why. Tom has been kind of uh, busy and distracted in his life. So I don't know how much background you want to give, Tom, um, but I definitely want to start at least before you and Kate and the kids started traveling. So I want to at, at least go back to the summer of 2018. Okay. Um, and if you want to, you can go, I think you should go even a little further back to just mention, mention you know, that you were divorced and, and, um, and kind of you know, what happened in your relationship. So will you give us a little bit, a little bit of background? Sure. In fact, it all started when we met. Yeah. That was that was sort of the beginning. That was the moment that the, you know, the the butterfly flapped its wings and mm-hmm. the hurricane followed uh, about five years later. So um, that would have been in. I'm not sure. Do you remember what year that was in? 2013, 2014 in the, in that region. Yeah, maybe and, 15 um, even. I went to uh, I went to a radical honesty workshop and you were there. You were filming it. And, um, and that's where we met. And it was also at the time, Kate and I were married. We had three kids. We have three kids. Um, and that, that meeting, um, you know, I got honest, basically, at that meeting. And then, um, and it, it, as I said, it, it sort of triggered a snowball that led to Kate and I getting divorced, um, which uh, then we, we did get divorced. We had a pretty, you know, as far as, divorces go I think we had a pretty good one mm-hmm. um, and uh, and then um, so we lived separate lives and Kate had the kids most of the time and I had the kids some kids some of the time and we homeschooled and we kept homeschooling even through divorce which um, is pretty tough because um, homeschooling is probably easiest when you've got two parents in the house mm-hmm. and one homeschools and the other one maybe has an income or something like that. So it was sort of awkward. Um, anyway, just one, just one aside there. And so we homeschooled the kids and we kept homeschooling kids through our divorce. And what I found is I, I, I sort of went through, um, looking back now, I sort of went through a, um, you know, when the, when the caterpillar goes into a chrysalis and has to do some serious hard work on themselves. You know, I, I kind of went through that. I went through a lot of pain and a lot of trouble, and a lot of difficulty, and I made a lot of bad decisions. And, and um, I had to learn some, some important lessons in life, but um, that came with a lot of pain at the same time, as these things, I think, uh, inevitably do. And um, just to, you know, to summarize what happened is I ended up getting you know, depressed and I lost my business and I lost my, my home and I sort of lost touch with my friends. And and probably the worst thing of all was that I, I, I lost the connection to my children. And so what would happen is I wouldn't see them for 11 and a half days. And then I would get them for a weekend and I'll be dreading them arriving. I'd be looking at the clock. When are the kids going to show up? And then I'd get the kids and I'd basically be a babysitter until I could get rid of them again on Sunday night or Monday morning, whenever it was. And the whole time I was just, I just did not enjoy having my kids. I let them do as much iPad as they wanted, you know, and, um, and we just sat in my apartment and often we didn't eat much, you know, and they they would go the whole day without eating. And then Kate would say, um, on Monday morning, you know, they would be starving and, uh, and she'd take them to the all you can eat buffet to, to like catch them up on their meals because, you know, there's tons of stories. There was one time I, I took the kids to, um, it was my turn to drop them off at the, at the camp they were doing that day or, or whatever it was. And, um, my fridge typically never had any food in it, like so, just a bottle of ketchup or anyway, I sent them, I sent them off to, to do this camp thing with, um, 
with a, a chunk of cheddar cheese and a jar of olives for their <laughs> lunch, <laughs> for their lunch box. Um, you know, cause just, I wasn't very good at doing the sandwiches and the, and the little, you know, apple or the juice box or whatever. But anyway, so, um, so my life kind of just fell apart. You know, I really, I really went through a bad, a, a period where I felt a lot of pain in, in my heart. Let's just say that. And, um, and now I look back and I'm sort of like grateful that, that I went through that because it sort of forged me a little bit into a different person with different priorities. And, and um, there's an old expression that I love, that the, the, only way, the only way out is through. And mm -hmm. I went through and, um, and I got out the other side and, and I wouldn't change anything. But, but it was a painful period of my life. And then, um, and of course, I tried so many different remedies to make myself feel better. And, and some of the, um, the actual issues I had were um, I couldn't sleep. I had really bad insomnia. Um, I also had a tremor in my hands. I, I just I had, I had the shakes, mm -hmm. probably because I wasn't sleeping much. And um, you know, I had um, I had in my head. I had um, um, I was regurgitating thoughts. Um, mm -hmm. I can't remember. What, you know, I just had the same thoughts just crunching in my head like bubble gum yeah. all the time, and I just couldn't. It was from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to bed. You know, and, and then I couldn't sleep. I just wanted to be able. To to sleep because it was like a an oblivion from these thoughts that I was having all day and then I couldn't sleep and I was now lonely at night and then I woke up in the morning just like couldn't wait to get up to get out of like for the night to go away but now I had to spend all day pushing the boulder up a hill with these thoughts anyway so um, of course I tried I uh, went to a psychiatrist they tried to give me Prozac but I just I never followed the rules that the psychiatrist wanted me to follow and so he eventually got frustrated with me and fired me. And then, um, you know, I tried, uh, uh, you know, I tried gym, I tried meditation, I read a bunch of self-help books. I, um, I tried drink and drugs. I tried um, uh, talk therapy. Uh, you know, I went to church and, um, you know, I did group therapy, I did a bunch of stuff. I, all I was doing was trying to like ease this pain that I was feeling. Feeling. I went to AA meetings, I went to all kinds of stuff, and um, nothing ended up helping. And in the end, Kate just said, look, you're useless. You're absolutely useless. So I'll, I'll look after the kids. Just go, get out of this town that we're living in. We were living in Florida. And go, go find yourself, go and heal yourself. So I quit my job. And I went to Scotland in the middle of winter. And then I, um, like I hiked up and down some mountains in the snow and I got blown around by some gales on the, you know, on the cliffs. And, um, and then after that, I went to South Africa and I, I found a place. Um, uh, While you're talking, first, I'd, for the, the viewers who are seeing this visually, I'd love for them to be able to see your face. So if you can frame your face in well, that would be, that would be great. But uh, while you're talking too, I'll share on my screen a couple images. So here's a, uh, here's a uh, Scotland. Yeah, yeah, that's Scotland. And this is there the time I'm on the train. Yeah, this is yeah, when I started. Um, I never really used social media before, and uh, and so I started posting these these pictures of myself and mm -hmm. and writing these little stories about um, the you know the the issues I was dealing with, and it was pretty cool. I got so much great feedback from from my friends, many of whom I hadn't actually, you know, we've all got friends, but you lose touch with people. And these, these pictures and my Instagram stories, and I tried to be as honest and like raw as possible. They really fired up some old connections um, right. for me. And, and um, people invited me to come and hang out. And yeah, look, there I am with one of my friends, newborn babies. That's my daughter, Penny. Um, so yeah, I just posted a bunch on, on Instagram. Then I have my mother, this is now that I went here's to, South Africa. to South Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I went to South Africa and made friends with, the, with the, like a bunch of surfers, a surfing family. And, um, and I, I stayed with them and, you know, I got my, my, myself smashed up by some big waves and freezing cold water. And, you know, I felt like that would be good for me. And, and, um, and it was just a, it was just a really good time, you know, still, struggling to try and find myself a little bit but this mm -hmm. was the beginning and then um it was at this time that Kate contacted me and um, I'd been away for three months now and Kate contacted me and said um uh that she wanted to take a road trip with the kids while I was away 
And of course, we homeschool our kids, so she could do that. And I said to her, well, maybe I can come. You know, I'm not doing anything either. And she sort of thought about it. And then, and then she said, yes. And look, here we are. That's the first day of our, of our road trip. So Kate invited me to come on the trip. And I rented this van, and we went for a little road trip across America and saw some national parks and stuff. And then um, one thing led to another. And we said, well, this is fun. You know, why don't we keep going? And so then we end up going to Europe. And that's what you see there. Um, sorry, the pictures are kind of muddled up in chronological order. But anyway, we, we then went on, um, on a trip around Europe. And then one thing led to another. And we ended up traveling around the, the whole planet. And um, as I talked to you, by the way, Tony, we, so we started this trip in May 2018. And just yesterday was our last day of uh, living, living on the road. We, we, I rented an apartment and we moved into that apartment yesterday. So we are now like back to civilized society. We're like a normal family again. Um, and where, where is that? Where are you now? We're in a town called Driggs in Idaho. Mm -hmm. population 1600 it's a very small town and um yeah we just we just moved into an apartment yesterday and um so like we're so excited we've we've been living on the road for two and a half years in the last four months we've been living in a tent and driving 100 miles a day around the usa and um so we have basically been camping out all summer and I just we just came from Glacier National Park yesterday where we were camping out and it was snowing and getting really cold to be living in a tent and so we had to hang up our spurs and and here here I am uh, now talking to you from with a roof over my head for the, mm -hmm. for the first time in two and a half years you know so yeah but, and then, then Kate and I are going to get married again wow. we've, we've rekindled our, our love and our relationship and and um, like I've totally reconnected with the kids and you know we do everything together now traveling as we do like we just spend all time together we're like a little wolf pack and we're inseparable and um you know i really like it that way and you know we just spent the last four months all five of us living in a tiny tent together you know and driving and you know living in eating from a camp stove you know around the campfire and you know basically living outside and um you know i don't know so so we uh kate and i are gonna are gonna get hitched again and we're, we're gonna we're gonna spend the rest of our life together great well um yeah i want to show a few more of these of these pictures is there any any area where you would you'd want us to show i mean you didn't well this is go africa you didn't yeah. go to the resorts, obviously. You were you were no. traveling kind of cheaply and giving your parent, your your family a a pretty unique exposure to the world. Um, so it would take us, you know, well over the hour that we have just to go through all these great photos that you have. But I'd love to I'd love to hit on any highlights. Yeah. Uh, so um, we 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 went to Europe. Then we went to Africa. This is Rwanda. These pictures. Mm -hmm. Then. Um, uh, I went to the Congo by myself because it's kind of a dangerous country. We went to Egypt and then we, um, we went to Lebanon. Um, then we spent four months in India, which I think was this, a total highlight. This stuff's that's India, Egypt. Yeah. Oh, this is Egypt. No, that's Egypt. Uh, yeah. Um, and then we, yeah, we went to India. Egypt was incredible. Like that, that walk through Mount, through the Sinai desert felt like we were walking through biblical times and we hired a, a Bedouin mm -hmm. guide. You can see him there. What an incredible day that was. Mm -hmm. It just felt like, and he's got these like nice sneakers on underneath his, uh, uh -huh. his he was a cool guy. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, so we went hiking. And you're right, we did like, we did not do the tourist stuff. We didn't stay in resorts. We didn't have infinity pools. We did as cheap as we could because I quit my job. So we were living off savings. You know, we, we were not digital nomads or anything like that. That's India there. That's India. Um, and uh, we saw the Taj Mahal. We, we went to China and we saw the Great Wall of China and the Terracotta Army. And we went to Japan and... Um, and uh, we basically made a complete circumference of the, of the globe. Mm -hmm. And then um, we got back earlier this year, just as COVID was starting, we couldn't, we had plans to go to Argentina and keep traveling that way. But with COVID, like international traveling was out. And so we, um, we thought, well, why don't we, uh, why don't we go camping in the USA? 
which is our home country. And we bought this little tent trailer. We bought it from Craigslist. It had no, no um, gonna, license. I'm going to catch up, catch up to you. I'm still in yeah, China, China and Japan. That's Japan. And, uh, and then this is Baltimore. We went to Nicaragua mm -hmm. and we were on our way to South America when, um, boom, here we are. That's our little camper that we bought. Mm -hmm. And, um, here we are. That's, um, it's Tennessee. So we, uh, yeah, we bought that thing from Craigslist without, it, it came without any registration or, or title. Mm -hmm. And um, somehow I had to figure out how to get this thing registered during COVID in March, you know, when all the DMVs were closed and all that stuff. I felt like if we didn't have a, a plate on the back, we were going to get pulled over by every cop from here to, from here to Alaska. But, um, I, I managed to get it done and we hit the road and we've, that's the tent we've been living in for the last, last five months almost. So <laughs> family um, of five, pretty impressive. Yeah. We crashed into that little thing. So <laughs> yeah, one kid slept on the floor. Kate and Penny slept in the little, the little bed and me and Dusty slept in like the, the bigger bed. And, um, and we drove 12,000 miles. We visited 22 states and it was all America's heartland. We never went to California or the coasts. We never went to the East coast or the, the West coast. We just stayed in, in middle America. And, and we saw the heartlands and the cornfields and the, uh, the grasslands. And um, we saw the great lakes and the, the, the forests and the, um, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we saw, we went on mines and we, we saw animals, uh, we rode horses, we shot guns, we, we took honey from beehives, you know, we did all this great American, like we, we rafted down the river of no return in Idaho for five days camping on the, on the beaches. It's like a whitewater rafting trip. Mm -hmm. um, we just had this epic time and, and we planned to go to Canada at the end of it and settle down in, um, in a ski resort in Canada, but because of COVID, they shut the border and we, we had to make a plan B. So our plan B was to come down to Idaho and now we're going to spend the winter here in, in Driggs. It gets 500 inches of snow a year. It gets tons of snow. So wow. it's, it's, we're going to be living in the fridge for the next six months. Well, so for those of you that are listening online, uh, we're not, you're not able to see some of these great photos from, from um, this Instagram account. And uh, it mostly starts just before when Tom was on this kind of solo travel uh, in, in 2018, his Instagram account mostly starts then and then carries this full two year kind of experience with the, with Kate and three kids. Uh, and it's not just beautiful pictures. You know, his writing is amazing. That's part of what, uh, what Tom used to do for a living. So the, the writing is great and very honest as, 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 uh, you could expect. Um, and so I do encourage people to check it out. Instagram.com slash hobo family. Uh, those of you that are just listening on the radio, you're also spared Tom's horrible framing. Let me, for, let me ask for forgiveness for the YouTube, uh, followers, <laughs> but now we can see your mouth. So that's, that's, that's better. Oh, was I, was I, sorry. No, it's fine. I'm holding my laptop here and it's yeah. not resting on a table. So yeah, maybe I'll do that. Yeah. Um, so this podcast Tom is is about like parenting. So a lot of the time, I uh, I'm reading books with Kara. Uh, I don't Kara. You definitely yeah. know um, yep. Itain, Other other uh, people from the radical honesty community. Um, a lot of it's following the philosophies Brad you know put forth in radical parenting. Did you ever read that book? I tried to read it and I got bogged down in it. I, mm -hmm. I find I found it quite difficult to to wade through. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we. Uh, we, we've been reviewing lots of books with kind of a similar ethos. I was originally going to call the podcast Prime Directive Parenting. Did you ever watch Star Trek growing up? No, I didn't. Uh, well, Star Trek has this rule called the Prime Directive. And uh, Prime Directive is essentially just non-interference. So especially when they're dealing with like less advanced civilizations, which I kind of metaphorically you know, relate to kids, um, the goal is that they're not supposed to interfere. They're supposed to let the kids, um, let these civilizations kind of develop on their own. And kind of this idea that no matter how well-intentioned we are in trying to impart uh, morals or ideas or technologies or skills. You screw them up. It, yeah, it tends to yeah. work worse than if you just let the children, uh, you let these others just figure things out on their own. There so is wanna, no teaching. There's only learning. Great. Yeah, so I want to hear I want to hear about like the homeschooling approach and just and yeah this I mean 
what you've been doing for the last two years feels completely out of the realm of possibility for most people. It seems like a totally radical parenting approach. Uh, but, um, but yeah, I'd like, I'd like, I'd like it to get a little bit more normalized for people and also just like hear about the, the way your kids are learning and, and, and how it's impacted your relationship with them, but also their relationship with others and their relationship with the world. So that's a big question, but if you shift it is a big question, I literally, I could, I could probably just keep talking for like two hours just to answer this one question, but just some thoughts that occurred to me while, while you were asking the question. Um, uh, so, um, so I'm really like, I am really proud of, of the kids. Um, I guess every parent probably feels that way. Um, I, I didn't always feel that way, but I really feel now that the kids, I, I'm really proud of them because they are kids that other humans like being around. Like to us, Kate always said, like the only thing that she cares about is that our kids be kind. That was it. Like, no, uh, t- you know, getting good results in exams or tests or any of these other like qualifications that society wants kids to achieve. We just thought we just want to, we just want to have kind, kind little humans. And, um, and so, so far, I think we've done a good job of that. Um, pe- people always ask us when we homeschool, when they hear that we homeschool, like, how do you socialize your kids? And I, I just find that such an ironic question because I, th- I think it comes from the fact that when people, people who aren't familiar with homeschooling assume homeschooling means putting your children in a, in a protective bubble and, and separating them from the rest of society and that they grow up like being weird because they, they don't have interactions with other humans, but that's just not what homeschooling, I guess there's some people who do that, but, but we never did that at all. In fact, you know, we've, we've traveled around the world and our kids have interacted with people of all religions, all races, of all ages, of all different languages, of all, you know, different socioeconomic status, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and I think that is, like, that is how you socialize kids, um, if, if that's what you're doing. Like, like, I think another way of saying it is, um, you know, I personally aspire to be a human that other humans want to be around. And, um, you know, I think that that is probably really important because if you're able to make good relationships with other humans, I think no matter what, you will be okay in this world. Like the world is abundant enough that if you are able to, to be a, if you're a person that other humans enjoy and like to be around, you're, you're set, you're fine. And so that to me is a big part of what our homeschooling is. And it's, it's very interesting in this trip around America, we just took one thing that made it different from being just a, another family who lives out of an RV and travels around America homeschooling their kids. And there's, there's quite a few of those. But what we did differently was we couch surfed. We couch surfed a bunch of times. And as, as you alluded to, I'm a writer. And um, even though I lost my job back in 2018, once I started writing and posting these pictures, um, I, got my, I got hired by a publisher to write. And so... Um, the, re- the readers of the, of the emails I write really responded well and they started writing to us and inviting us to come and camp in their driveways. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so for the last four months, not only have we, we slept in campgrounds and stuff, but we've also been invited and we have slept in driveways, backyards, barns. Uh, we slept in a restaurant parking lot the other night. Um, we, we slept, um, you know, in horse pastures. we we've been everywhere and all along we've met these people who have like taken us in they found us like a stray family sitting in their driveway and they embraced us and took us in and 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 fed us and like socialized with us and our kids were just like i'm so proud of how outgoing and polite and um I, i guess i'm just so proud of how much i saw people who were strangers to us enjoying the company of my family of my family and and that to me was like i was super proud of that i feel like we can go anywhere now and people 
like being around us and I don't take that for granted and I feel like that's a big big compliment and achievement that we've done so far and of course you know we've got to keep working on it and I think traveling is is part of that now another thing you alluded to in your question was um how other families can do this and I feel like part of my writing, part of the thing that motivated me to write, because Kate and I are both quite private and we are not naturally like social media posting type people. You know, I never really posted before. I had a Facebook account, but I was always a behind the scenes lurker. And um, what got me to start posting was I felt like we were doing something that I wanted to inspire others to maybe think that they could do this too and um, I knew that we could only do I could only feel good about doing that if a we you know we're not some like family with millions in the bank that um, you know that that you know that we we were doing something that because we have a privilege that other people didn't have and 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 we didn't we had no no special privilege in fact we had some disadvantages in that we were divorced you know, we, we were a broken family when we started. And so not only do we have to, to deal with that, but, um, you know, we lived off savings and, you know, we, we weren't super rich. And so we had to kind of figure it out and, and we lived really cheap. You know, I chose countries to visit that have really low exchange rates where we could get the most value for our money. And um, I, I tried to like look out, look for deals everywhere we possibly could. And, and we even use credit card points for our plane tickets and all kinds of stuff. I did all kinds of like what you might call hacks, travel hacks to, to, to make it as budget as possible. And like in India, at one point, we were living off like 150 bucks a week, you know, for a family of five, it's, it's pretty good going. And even this camping trip in America, we were probably only spending about three grand a month, I reckon, which, which is not bad, you know, considering... Um, you know, we just got to see America and have an incredible time. You know, that was definitely cheaper than what what our stand, our cost of living was when we were living regular back in Florida. So anyway, um, so part of me wanted to inspire and I felt like, you know, um, anyone could do this. Any family could just quit it and chuck it all in and, and then go travel the world and have this great experience. But then I realized that's not true. And um, we we were only lucky. We were we were the um, we were the recipients of a lucky confluence of events that allowed us to to jump through the portal, as it were, and go and live this completely alternative life. And um, part of it was to do with my what I call my mental illness. Part of it was to because we were divorced. Part of it was because everything just like kind of life kind of dumped us in this spot where we really had nothing to lose. And I recognize that, you know, a family who, who may not have been in that situation, you know, can't just think, oh, well, why don't I just throw my job in? You know, why don't we get, you know, just say goodbye to all our friends? Why don't we just pull our kids from school? Why don't we just like abandon everything that we, we've been working for and go travel the world and live in third world countries? And, and, you know, so now I realize that we were lucky and we were fortunate and that, that in a way we did have a privilege that allowed us to, to, to have this incredible trip. And that privilege was, ironically, the, what, what was giving me incredible amounts of pain, you know? So, so now I see that as a privilege that I went through that, like those dark hours. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's a truism, you know, the, the dark is, is, the night is darkest before dawn, you know, and that's, you know that's kind of how I feel and um so anyway you know I would I would tell any family that if you if you could if you could find a way to, to chuck it all in and go and travel and, and and do what we did which basically no school no work no home you know those those are the big three we got rid of them and we lived and we call ourselves the hobo family and you know we we lived outside and we we had a very simple life with no possessions really and and just all experiences and most of all just being together all the time just enjoying each other's company and 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 being on a mutual sort of we had a goal to travel around the world so in a way that you know you know you get a sports team I, i've never been a sport sports person very much but i imagine that feeling of camaraderie when you're on a winning team and you win the super bowl or you win the high school you know state championship or whatever it is and you have this incredible camaraderie with your teammates that that you can't really feel like, um, but we felt that as a family, because we were, here we are trying to travel around the world in difficult places like India and Africa. 
and and it pulled us all together and we sort of felt this camaraderie like a sports team but but with my with Kate and the kids like that was a very special feeling to to feel that sort of like team that wolf pack idea where we're surviving and it's us against the world and we did it you know and we gave each other a high five at the end and it was like it's like wow we're we're a really good team together we're like a team of huskies pulling a sleigh or something I, I don't know but it was that feeling like I've said this before, if I died tomorrow, I would die with a smile on my face knowing that we did this trip and I got to experience that. And I feel like everything else that life offers me from this point is, is gravy, you know, it's total gravy. And, and um, so anyway, I'm starting to ramble now, but I hope that kind of like scratched the surface of the question that you were asking. Yeah. One of the books that Kara and I recently read talked about, you know, whether you're, whether you're, you know, just trying to get your groceries at the grocery store with your child or whether you're trying to like discipline your child or trying to, you know, whatever, in all situations, you want to put the relationship that you're forming with your child first. And that, that kind of comes to mind for me as, as, as you're, you're talking. And I, I'd, I'd like to hear about like how you deal with <clears throat> more with, with, homeschooling or, or even like with, with discipline and getting through kind of rough times and disagreements and, and whatever, it, it does seem clear that focusing on kindness, knowing what you, knowing what you want to instill in your kids and knowing that you want your kids to be kind is, is great. Having that focus on your relationship with your kids, having that freedom to kind of not be that focused on much else. Like it's not like you're squeezing in this time with your kids between the work meetings or something like that. You had a lot of time and energy, but I want to hear more about, about all that. I want to hear more about the kindness. I want to hear more about um, the relationship you want with your children. And uh, I want to hear more about, about how you handle the tough times with them. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's, those are good questions. So um, again, I was having thoughts as you were asking that, and I'll keep um, track of I'll keep track of my own request. You can go where you want to go. Yeah. So um, kindness is a big deal, you know, amongst each other. You know, like when the kids fight, um, you know, we 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 monitor and manage that quite closely, quite hands-on, where they, where they, when they have disagreements with each other, you know, it's very important to us that we, um, we don't allow them just to have, like, un, just, just, just to kind of go at each other and have big fights. And, and, um, and then... In what uh, way? Do you want to be more specific? I mean, in radical honesty, I'm familiar with, like, resentment exercises where you resist the anger you're mad at if you have anger and you're mad at people and you resist that, it only kind of builds, but there's also, you know, ways to just express that where it also just builds like, you know, some catharsis kind of stuff, which pe people have proven doesn't really work. So what is your guys' structure for how to, how to, yeah. how to not resist it and avoid it, but also how to not, you know, get carried away or, or cause more damage? Yeah. Look, I've, I've, study radical honesty a lot so I, I understand that and i've been to two workshops i think and um or even three workshops and and yeah i've been to three with you so i know you've been to more yes than two. i've been to three so um so we carry that into our parenting you know but it, you have to adjust it a little bit because kids aren't quite ready for, for the, you know some of those are quite um i, I don't want to say they're they're quite difficult um, for, for little minds to get their head around, I think, probably. And, and, you know, I find most interesting, my daughter, Penny, she's eight. She, she is the most emotional of the kids, and she can just, she, her emotions can just swing so rapidly and so intensely, you know, that she's the one who probably takes the most work on Kate and I's behalf. Um, but, yeah, we, tr we try and sort of encourage them to speak in terms of, I'm mad at you because uh, of of something you know you did rather than to retaliate or be mean or you know but to express the, to try and express the idea that anger is just a feeling within you and um, and it's it's actually nicer and more compassionate to the people around you if you're able to express that anger in a way that's um, 
it not mean like one of the things we always say like it's okay to be mad it's not okay to be mean and um you know so, so that's that's one of the things and and um it, it also occurs to me that i agree with you about what you said at the beginning with the introduction to this podcast with um i can't remember what you called it permissive parenting or something like that prime directive uh, the prime prime directive parenting yeah i i do agree that um it's it's arrogant to think that you can direct children to 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 somehow be an idea of some sort of ideal of what you expect them to be and first of all your expectations might not be as hot as you think and secondly your ability to manage the child to meet your expectations might also not be as hot as you think and so as you said even with the best intentions we just don't know like how, how things kind of turn out not how you would expect and and so that's my personal view i'm i'm naturally quite a sort of laissez-faire guy and, and libertarian and and um and and the kids will the kids will you know they will learn what they learn despite what you try to teach them and and um you, you're never quite sure like you know, so hands off stuff. And, and as, as you said, it's, it's the kindness thing. And I don't know quite how you teach kindness. It, I don't know if it is teachable or if maybe we've just been lucky with, with the kids we've got or if there's some sort of something we do. I, I don't know. But Kate's a great mother and she really, you know, she really, um, you know, focuses on, on, I guess, on good morals and just guidance. And another thing about homeschooling is that you were just there to you're just there to help sort of um point your kids in the right direction i don't know if i'm if i'm um you know saying the opposite of what i just said just a second ago contradicting myself but but somehow homeschooling you, you can sort of direct the kids a little bit in in the way that they point and you can sort of point them away from the walls so they can walk straight and stop bumping into stuff quite so much uh, whereas kids that maybe are you know, in school being supervised by, by other kids and a teacher who might not, have, you know, be hung over or didn't get as much sleep or, or has a classroom size that's too big and, and you're in a public school or whatever. And, and I, I don't know, like, I don't know if our way is better than that way. I'm not sure. And I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't be arrogant enough to, to make that assumption, you know, that our way is better than anyone else's. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's something we think about and it's something we really like talk. I guess we talk about it a lot. Maybe that's the thing. Just, just having discussions. We have a lot of discussions about stuff and um, that's part of homeschooling too. We end up watching a lot of videos on YouTube and we watch all kinds of interesting videos um, on all sorts of subjects like Ted talks and stuff. And um, you know, some of our favorite videos, like, I can't help. I know the kids are doing it at school, but I overhear them and I come and watch too. And then we, we have discussions about it. So maybe, maybe that's the thing is just to spend time with the kids and talk about a lot of stuff and discuss things. And, you know, recently on this trip around America, we've listened to a ton of audio books. And so we just sit there in the car listening to these books and we have listened to some great books. And, um, and, you know, those have, some of those have good role models in them too. You know, we've been listening to Westerns and cowboy books, you know, like Louis L'Amour and, and they have some good masculine role models in those books that maybe not quite politically correct these days, but I still think they, I think they're good role models for boys. And they're, they're often like the kind, you know, the, the, the tough, but kind like male figure who's a cowboy and you know, it's, it's justice, but it's also bravery and all that kind of stuff. And so you know, we listen to these books and then we, we talk about them afterwards. And the book we just listened to is called Monty Walsh, which is a classic, um, like an, a beautiful story of a, of a cowboy in the, in the late 1800s. And like we're listening to this in the car and we actually listened to the last chapter yesterday in the car as we drove to Driggs to, to move into our new apartment. And I just started bawling. I was just crying and crying, like while I'm trying to drive, like I'm driving mm. and I'm like trying to get the tears out of my eyes. It was so sad, but it was nice to talk about that afterwards with the kids. Like, why was it sad? And, and, um, and then, you know, we talk about the, the main character's flawed. You know, he's not, he's not perfect. He drinks a lot. He smokes a lot. He, 
he chases women a lot, you know, but he's also like a great guy and he's, he's kind and, and, um, you know, so we talk about that stuff and, and I guess, you know, maybe that's, maybe that's like a good thing to do is just, just have a lot of conversations. Yeah. Without, without I, a lot of judgment. Yeah. I loved when you interrupted me and said like, there is no teaching, there's only learning. That's, it sounds like that's what you're doing with those, with those conversations. Yeah, and of course, traveling around the world, you know, we've got to see the Taj Mahal and we've got to see the Great Wall of China and, and the Great Pyramids of Egypt. And again, it's just conversation starters. Like, you know, then we study the history of these places and, and we watch videos about, you know, and then we have conversations. They're just, it's all just conversation starters for us to have back in the Airbnb in the evening. And, and, then, and then the kids draw pictures and, and um, you know, it's sort of like um, the homeschooling style is just exposure combined with um with discussion you know it's like you watch a movie and then you discuss it afterwards and and i never wanted school to be boring for the kids where you just have to sit there and lo- re- sorry learn wrote facts you know by heart whereas what we do is we do interesting things and then we talk about it and it's sort of like and we meet interesting people and we talk about them and, and we do it all together and we do it honestly and kate and i never have side conversations or we try not to and um you know i admit we even have disagreements and arguments sometimes as all couples do especially when you're living in a tent or traveling around the world you know if you can do that with someone you know you're going to have a few disagreements sometimes and but we we have our disagreements in open with the kids and we talk about it together and um you know i think that is kind of like a, an overall style of our of our homeschool it's like exposure combined with dialogue yeah i love that you're arguing in front of the kids and it, it, i imagine it's a little crutch like you know in my important relationships or the relationship i had with my mother and my child i wasn't always you know who and how i want to be with her and and i imagine that yeah having my kids there it would be great to i'd love to have them as almost like a crutch like here's how i can be mad at Kate in your instance and not be mean, you know, here's how I can feel how I'm feeling and be mad and acknowledge it and not pretend I'm not and yeah, communicate it directly. So it doesn't come out in other weird ways, uh, but not be mean because you never need to, you never need to be mean. Yeah. You never need to get away from the kids mm-hmm. so you can have the mean part. Uh, you don't need. To- yeah. It's not necessary. Not, not with your, not with your best friend, not with your kids, not with random strangers. Like, I don't think there's ever a call of, to be mean. Yeah. So. Well, one yeah. of the things you said is like, yeah, I don't know exactly how we teach kindness. Um, certainly that's one way that you're doing it and just modeling it, how you guys are doing it, introducing them to the people and showing them that, you know, I do believe that we are. And I think one of the common themes of our, of the readings, the books that I've been drawn to, that Karen and I have been reading, or that Tain has been suggesting, is that they believe that we are born good, that we are inherently good, that we are evolved over millions of years to want to connect to people, to want to cooperate. The people who are isolated and were genetically pre-programmed for complete isolation, they had a big genetic disadvantage and probably died off a long time ago. So I think... I think we are programmed to, to be good to each other and it's other, you know, ways that we mess things up in ourselves and, and that are, that our parents do that have us not be that. Yeah. yeah, Mostly fear based. Yeah. Yeah. So I think some parenting books are really come from that fear based kind of like Leviathan Lord of the flies kind of perspective on the world. Um, and think that, yeah, we have these inherent evils built into us that we need to like, you know, shape or whatever, but the books we lean towards are ones that believe in the inherent goodness. And an episode we just did talks about like one of the ways to teach that in kids um, is just to, just to get them as fluent. You know, there's so many like ABC books on like ABCs of animals and colors and whatever, but I've been focusing, even though he's not really old enough to understand on just, you know, ABCs of emotions, kind, lonely lonely yeah and and yeah just like these ones this one's this series is from a woman named sarah medina that again just says it's okay to feel impatient you know all these emotions come and go when you let yourself feel them 
And then they even have these kind of like quizzes where you can like yeah. see kids' faces and recognize the different great. kinds of emotions. So cool. Yeah, those are really great. And I, I think you, you don't have to even say like, that was wrong because you made him feel bad or something like that. You only have to help your kids sometimes consider these feelings and they'll, they'll put it, put two and two together and they'll just be, I think when most of us are, are ways we don't want to be, or when we're mean or something like that, it's because we're just failing to consider other people and other people's perspectives and how other people are feeling. So for me, that's the one crutch or the one tool I've been trying to help instill in, in my child at least. And it's practice I want for myself as well. I, I agree with everything you said. I, I agree that, that humans are innately good and, um, and, and that's the sort of default position. And, um, and I also agree, you know, I think, um, you know, leadership by example is, is probably important, whether, you know, that's the, the example I set and Kate sets or the examples that um, the kids see um, f- from around them, you know, from in their world. Um, you know, it's, they, they learn, you know, on this, this last trip we've done, you know, oh my gosh, we have been treated to such incredible kindness by everyone we've met. Like you, you might think, people ask us this, like when you're couch surfing as a family, across America, and we, we, we couch surfed over 30 times. So 30 times we showed up to a random stranger's house and we're, we're embraced and invited in and we sat at the, the meal table with them and then we slept either in their house or in their driveway or whatever, you know, and we basically, we shared life with them for a couple of days and we did this 30, 30 different times. And um, people say, well, did you ever have bad experiences where where you show up and, you know, something bad happened. And the answer to that is no, like not one single exception. Every, without exception, we were shown incredible kindness and, and, and generosity from people who, who, who had never met us before. And it just happened over and over again to the point that I'm starting feeling like, I'm starting to feel like a moocher, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, and, you know, we weren't and we never took it for granted or anything. But like, I think that was great for the kids to see like people being kind to us. Like those people were, were role models. They were examples. And, and we met people. And, you know, another thing is, is almost everyone we met were, were, were married couples. Um, I don't think we, we may have stayed with a couple of people who were not married, but we got to see a close up of all these different relationships and, um, you know, these different family setups and things. And, and, you know, I think that was, was great exposure for the kids just to, to see like the power of kindness and the power of generosity and how, how it feels to be a recipient of that. And then, then to pay it forward is so much easier when you've received it and you know what it looks like. It's probably easier. I'm just making this up. But I would guess that if you have received kindness and generosity, it's probably easier to exercise kindness and generosity than if you've only ever received cruelty and, and violence. Again, it's probably easier to exercise cruelty and violence. I, mm-hmm. I don't know if that's, you know. Of course. Know, so but and- that's, yeah. Also, even just being, being, we're all kind of afraid of the unknown. So even just being insulated from, from other people and being in a home where it's just your mom or just your mom and dad or just your siblings or whatever, we learn to fear what we don't understand and know. And so I imagine that is a great experience for them to see all these different people of all these different backgrounds and this common theme being kindness. Kindness. And we did it during the time of COVID. Oh, where wow. Everyone else is being so to, to isolate from from their fellows and and stay in their houses and not go to work and you know people thought we were crazy to to cast out into america during covid we we hit the road in may 2020 and so our kids have seen us like basically thumb our nose at covid and go and meet like hundreds of people in campsites and and houses and restaurants all across the country and and, um and we didn't let that hold us back at all Mm -hmm. and um you know the 
I don't know what, what sort of message, you know, they, they pick up from that, but, you know, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that. We, we defied the, the, I, the isolationist tendency that COVID and the media and the government wants to, to impress upon us. And we defied that for good or bad. And we didn't catch COVID. We didn't give anyone COVID. And, um, you know, we didn't wear a lot of masks too much, you know, and, but, you know, then again, we weren't going to the bars and concerts and political gatherings or anything like that. We were living in, you know, in a tent in campsites, you know, mm-hmm. so you're kind of not necessarily, um, you know, you're outdoors, so I guess a little safer. And we were in states where they didn't have big COVID outbreaks and we were also on the back roads and in rural parts of America and small towns, you know, where this thing hasn't been so, such a big issue. So I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to leave you with one last question. Um, I, I mentioned it in the, in my groupings of questions, but um, yeah, I, I, I want to at all times with my child put that relationship first and, and be, be conscious, more conscious of the kind of relationship I'm trying to cultivate with my kids than I am conscious of this mess that needs cleaning up or this, this yeah. deadline that needs being met or whatever. And so I want to ask you, yeah, what, when you think about the kind of relationship you want to cultivate with your kids and your family, what are some of those core, core, um, you know, qualities you want to cultivate? You know, I think you just hit the nail on the head. That, that's the biggest change that, have, that occurred in my life, going through that dark period that I went through. What really was happening there was I was life was demanding that I, I shuffled my priorities around. Like life literally grabbed me by the, by the, the shirt collar and it demanded that I change my priorities. And I got shown what, what sort of blessings um, would come to me if I did change my priorities. So before going to that, I was driven by materialism and money and, um, and getting recognition and acknowledgement from my work. And, um, you know, and I would say to Kate, well, I, I've, you know, I've got to do my career. I got to, you know, I got to do this. And, and I ended up like my priorities were such that um, my computer was above my children and was above my wife. And, you know, part, you, you might say that was kind of the reason that we ended up getting divorced because my priorities were wrong and um, and it got reorganized. And so now my priority is being with my family, like every decision, like life can be can be brought down to a series of decisions. Like if you want to be rich, all you have to decide to do is every decision you make every day to ask yourself, is this going to make me richer or poorer? And then you choose, this is going to make me richer. And if you do that, I guarantee you, you will get rich if you're, if you're that determined to. And likewise, if you want to, um, if you want to have a healthy like relationship with, with your kids and wife, like I ask myself now, will this bring me closer or further away to my kids. And this is a little thing. Like if we're going to eat a meal, if I sit down with them and eat the meal together, or, or I could go and sit and watch TV and, and listen to music or something and, and skip that meal. And, um, you know, it'll just bring me a very little bit further away from them versus I could be brought a very little bit closer to them if I had the meal with them. So it's like every, every, Every decision now, I pass through that filter. Will this bring me closer or further away from my family? And now I go through life like that way. And I want to be closer to them because, because I've seen firsthand from my experience that, that making that decision makes me happier. It makes my life better. And, um, and I hope it makes their life better too. You know, I, I would hope that. And, um, and so... Yeah, um, yeah. It, it's it's that it's that shuffling of priorities that that changed everything. And um, I don't know. Does that answer your question? Did I did I hit yeah. the notes? Not exactly, but it's better than my question. So I think I think it's I think it's great. Yeah, it's 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 a priorities thing. Oh, and this is what I want to add too. Um, we get such a small window to be with our children 
like I realized this um, when I read this this study that somehow examined like how much time you spend with your parents um, together under the same roof. And of course, as you grow up, you leave you leave home and then you get married and then you have your own family sort of thing. You know, that's a very general sort of uh, progression of life. But but that, that time that you spend with your parents is so brief and it goes by so fast. And then, you know, of course they're still your parents, but now they're getting older and now you're living apart and you see them a lot less. And the time you do see them is probably not quite as such quality time as those years when you live under the same roof as your children. And like, don't waste it. It is so precious. It is so precious. Like it might only be 20 years that you get to be with your kids under the same roof before they leave and then go and have their own priorities and you're left behind. And like, so I've just decided I do not want to waste one second of that. I can go back to work later. I can do, you know, I can, I can make money later when I, you know, whatever. But this, this little period that we're in where my kids are sort of coming of age and like if, if, it goes by so fast and everyone says that. So it's almost a cliche, but I refuse to waste one more second of that time. Like looking at my phone, looking at email, stressing about getting like recognition from, from people, you know, at work, blah, blah, blah. Like I can pursue that, that crap later. Right now it's, I'm in the window. Like my son is going to be 13 this year. So, you know, I don't know what happens when he hits 20, but he may not want to still be living with us anymore. And he certainly, I hope, will have the equipment to go and live on his own, whatever he chooses. But, but he doesn't have that equipment yet. And he's still under my roof. And like, I need to enjoy that. I need to enjoy that because it's going to be gone. And like, if you, if for my parents now, like they, one of them lives in London, one of them lives in New York, they're both getting older, they're both getting sick. I don't see them, you know, except for twice a year. Like I am probably, if you look at it in terms of a clock, the amount of quality in-person time that I get to spend with my parents, I am probably now in the final 2% of all that time that I will have been given. Like I am at, I am at like 11.45 p.m. Of the, of the amount of time that I will have spent in my life, of quality time with my parents. It is done. Like it is done. I am just going to try and spend, I'm, I'm going to try and spend more time with my parents before they die. Because like I, I wasted most of that time when I was a kid and not, you know, not necessarily enjoying that. And it's, it makes me sad to think that that great quality time with my parents is gone except for a very small what's left. And I don't want to waste that with my kids. So, um, yeah, there you go. that's my final thought. Well, thank you. So you're not sending them away to a British boarding school. I'm not sending them away to British boarding school. <laughs> no way. Not happening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good. All right. Well, Tom, thank you so much. Uh, again, you're listening to the Radical Parenting Podcast. Uh, that was Tom Dyson that you were uh, listening to for the last hour. Uh, you can check out his, uh, his, his family and his adventures at Instagram.com slash hobo family. Uh, I hope you, I hope you keep it going. Uh, even if, even if it won't be as picturesque as it's been. For you know, um, I stopped posting on social media three months ago and, and, um, I stopped looking at my phone so much, but I do write and I write this thing called postcards from the fringe. You just Google that and you find mm -hmm. it. That's if you want to keep following along with us, that's the best way to do it. Okay. Uh, I, there's something about social media that I don't find healthy and I don't want to contribute to, to that. So we, we checked out of Facebook and Instagram. Great. Postcards from the fringe. Postcards from the fringe. Yeah. It's an email I send out every day. All right. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Tom. It was really good to see you. I wish we had a time, a chance to catch up. I have such great memories with you and, and yeah, not that you are short on welcome homes, but uh, you've got, you've got a, a very welcoming home for you in Denver anytime you and the family pass through. I really appreciate that, Tony. And I, I would love to take you up on that. We're right. not a million miles away from Denver. So yeah, good. Well, good to see you. Thanks for making time today. Yeah, good to see you too, and a big hug from here, and, um, and, and talk soon. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.